As Arden watched in awe and disbelief, the scene unfolded like a surreal dance. Nagini, half man, half serpent, wrapped itself around Aisha, their connection undeniable. The river, now imbued with a mystic glow, responded to the serpent's touch, shimmering with an otherworldly radiance. Once upon a time, in the quiet village of Zamada, there lived a skilled hunter named Aiden, his loving wife Aisha, and their two young children. Aidan was known for his prowess with a bow and arrow, and every morning he would embark on a journey into the dense woods to provide for his family. Each day before he left, Adan would lovingly paint Aisha's face with intricate designs, using colours extracted from the vibrant flora that surrounded their humble dwelling. Aisha, with a smile that radiated warmth, accepted this daily ritual as a symbol of their deep connection. However, upon his return in the evenings, Ardon would find the carefully applied paint washed away from Aisha's face. Intrigued and somewhat puzzled, he questioned her about this mysterious occurrence. Her response was always the same. She calmly explained that the river's gentle touch washed away the paint as she fetched water for their home. Though slightly doubtful, Ardan trusted Aisha's explanation, choosing to believe in the simplicity of her words. Yet, a seed of curiosity and concern had been planted in his mind. After several months of questioning, Aisha, and receiving the same response that the river washed the paint as she fetched water, Ardan's doubt grew like an insistent shadow. He couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to this river's magic than met the eye. Fueled by suspicion, he decided to investigate, to unravel the enigma that clung to Aisha's morning ritual. One day, just as the first light of dawn embraced the village, Adan meticulously painted Aisha's face, emphasising the beauty that had first captivated his heart. As he kissed her goodbye, and left for the forest with his hunting equipment. A lingering uncertainty cast a shadow upon their once blissful routine. With the children still nestled in the embrace of slumber, Aisha waited a brief moment after her husband's departure. Then she gracefully took her pot, balancing it effortlessly on her head, and made her way to the river bank. The air was thick with anticipation as she reached the water's edge. Once there, she took off her clothes with a practised ease, exposing her bare form to the cool morning breeze. Facing the river, she raised her voice, echoing through the serene surroundings. Nagini, your lover is here. At that very moment, hidden amidst the bush thickets nearby, Adan's eyes widened with disbelief and shock. He strained to keep his presence concealed as the words echoed through the air. Suddenly, from the depths of the crystal-clear river, a mysterious figure emerged. A colossal serpent, its body entwined with human-like features, rose with a fluid grace. The creature, Nagini, possessed a captivating beauty that transcended the boundaries between the human and the serpentine world. Its eyes glowed with an otherworldly intelligence and a sly smile played upon its lips. Aisha, now standing at the water's edge, met Nagini's gaze with a cunning smile of her own. The air crackled with a strange energy and the river seemed to respond to their unspoken connection. The enchantment unfolded revealing a clandestine bond between the woman and the serpent being. As Ardan watched in awe and disbelief, the scene unfolded like a surreal dance. Nagini, half man, half serpent, wrapped itself around Aisha, their connection undeniable. The river, now imbued with a mystic glow, responded to the serpent's touch, shimmering with an otherworldly radiance. Ardan, torn between shock and disbelief, 
continued to observe, unable to tear his gaze away from the mesmerising spectacle. The husband, torn between shock and disbelief, continued to observe, unable to tear his gaze away from the mesmerising spectacle. As Nagini, the half-man, half-serpent, and Aisha began their romantic escapades, a storm of conflicting emotions brewed within Adan. Anguish, jealousy, and anger collided, creating a tempest in his heart. Unable to bear the sight of Aisha entangled in the serpentine embrace of Nagini, Adan's infatuation twisted into a maddening fury. In a surge of desperation, he withdrew his crossbow and spear, the metal glinting ominously in the dappled sunlight filtering through the thick foliage. With a precision honed from years of hunting, Aidan aimed at Nagini's human-like head, his fingers trembling with a mix of rage and despair. The arrow sliced through the air, propelled by a force fueled by betrayal and wounded pride. However, before the projectile could find its mark, Nagini's preternatural reflexes kicked in. The serpent being, sensing the impending danger, twisted and evaded the lethal trajectory with an almost supernatural grace. As Arden's intended strike missed its mark, a wave of realisation swept over Aisha. Startled and alarmed, she turned towards her husband, her eyes widening in disbelief at the scene unfolding before her. Before she could comprehend the betrayal in Ardan's eyes, he swiftly loaded another spear into his crossbow. Driven by a tumult of emotions and a desire to sever the mystical connection that bound Aisha to Nagini, Ardan took aim once more. This time, however, his target was not the serpent being, but the very heart of the woman he had once painted with love. The second spear whizzed through the air, its trajectory guided by a volatile mixture of anguish and fury. It found its mark, burying itself deep within Aisha's chest. A gasp escaped her lips as the spear penetrated her heart, the agony etched across her face, mirroring the shattered love that had once thrived between them. Nagini, now fully aware of the perilous turn of events, slithered back into the depths of the river with a mournful hiss, disappearing from the scene. Adan, overcome by the weight of his actions, dropped to his knees, the realisation of what he had just done sinking in. The hunter, his hands stained with the consequences of his impulsive actions, left Aisha's lifeless body floating in the blood-stained waters of the river. A macabre scene unfolded, with the crimson hue mingling with the crystal-clear stream, creating a haunting tableau that mirrored the shattered remnants of love. As he made his way back home, Adan felt a heavy emptiness within, a hollowness that mirrored the stark reality of his choices. For the first time, he returned from the woods without any game to provide for his family. Exhausted and tormented, he went straight to bed, the weight of guilt and grief pressing upon him like an unyielding burden. The evening arrived, and the children, oblivious to the tragedy that had unfolded, grew increasingly worried as their mother failed to return home. Unable to contain their concern, they woke their father, who, grappling with his guilt, dismissed their worries with a fabricated tale. He spun a web of deception, claiming that their mother had embarked on a journey to visit her parents in another village and would be away for a month. The next day, the two children still troubled by their mother's mysterious absence, went to the river to fetch water. As they approached the water's edge, a foreboding sight awaited them. An enormous hurricane-like wave loomed in the distance, hurtling towards them with menacing force. Fear gripped their hearts as they braced for impact. Amidst the roaring waves, they heard their mother's voice, a haunting melody carried by the wind. The children's hearts pounded 
and their legs trembled with fear, hindering them from fleeing the impending danger. Just as panic threatened to consume them, the water miraculously calmed, and there, standing with half of her body submerged in the river, was their mother. The children, both astonished and terrified, questioned their mother about her. Surreal presence, she began to unravel the truth, revealing her dual nature as a naga, half human, half snake. She explained that she had sacrificed herself to marry a human, performing rituals that temporarily transformed her into a mortal. The gods had dictated this union to alleviate a drought that plagued the land, with the naga human marriage serving as a mystical solution. However, she confessed the painful truth that she had left the love of her life at the river's depths where the Nagas resided. Overwhelmed by longing, she occasionally visited the river to be with him, and it was during one of these visits that the tragedy unfolded. Ardan, driven by jealousy and rage, had mistakenly taken the life of both her and her serpentine lover. However, as he left the scene, Nagini, having managed to evade the arrow, returned for her with a swift and graceful movement. With utmost care, Nagini cradled the wounded Aisha in its serpentine coils and disappeared into the river's depths. At the river floor, where the Nagas resided, Nagini took Aisha to a skilled healer among their kind. The Naga healer, with ancient knowledge and mystical abilities, worked tirelessly to mend the wounds inflicted by the arrow. As the children grappled with the revelation, their mother's eyes shimmered with sorrow and regret. She implored them to keep her secret, for the bond between the Naga and the human world was delicate, and revealing it could have dire consequences. The children, torn between conflicting emotions, reluctantly agreed to keep the truth hidden. Aisha, bearing the heavy burden of her dual existence, disclosed to her children the profound secret of their heritage. With tears in her eyes, she explained that they too were Nagas, destined to undergo a ritual that would transform them into beings with both human and serpent-like features. She revealed that they had the choice to embrace this mystical path or continue their lives as humans. Isha reassured them that regardless of their decision, she would always be there for them in any form they chose to live their lives. The river, she explained, was a realm where both worlds converged, offering them the freedom to shape their destinies. With a mixture of trepidation and curiosity, the children stood by the water's edge as their mother emerged from the river her form shifting to unveil the serpent-like half of her existence. The children, in awe and astonishment, beheld the magnificent creature before them. With a tenderness that transcended her dual nature, the woman embraced her children, wrapping them in the coils of her serpent form. For the first time, the kids felt the cool scales against their skin, an intimate connection to a world that existed beyond the confines of their village. As the moment lingered, the woman bid her children farewell, promising that she would always be present in their lives, whether seen or unseen. With a gentle kiss and a final embrace, she slipped back into the river, disappearing into the depths with a graceful flick of her serpentine tail. The children now faced with the weight of their newfound knowledge, left the riverbank with conflicted emotions. The choice between their human lives with their grief-stricken father and the mysterious world their mother offered beckoned them, each path laden with uncertainty and complexity. Returning home, the village held an air of silence, untouched by the magical revelation that had transpired at the river. As the children grappled with their decision, Adan, still haunted by the tragedy he had unwittingly caused, sensed the turmoil within them. The children, torn between familial ties 
and the allure of the mystical realm beneath the river faced a daunting choice.